Paul Smith, and I'm going to talk today about independent publishing, a revolution that's happened, which I guess started with the upheaval caused by Fifty Shades of Grey, which was initially a blog and then became successful and then was picked up by the regular publishing industry. So maybe your book can be as successful as that, even if it's not in the same genre. So what I'm going to talk about is understanding the indie publishing revolution, what it means to you, uh, and then preparing for publishing. That's before you start to publish, you know, writing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, formats, whether you want ebooks or paperbacks, and the routes to market for each of those formats. Using Amazon, um, a practical expose on how to use Amazon, and then the alternatives to Amazon, uh, which are many, though you've got to remember that Amazon has about 80% of the marketplace, particularly for ebooks. And then how you do marketing. Uh, one thing that you must not ignore is marketing if you're going to be an independent publisher. It is pretty ruthless and uh, it's uh, enduring and you have to continue doing it. So, what does independent publishing mean to you? Well, there are two routes, the traditional process and the independent process. And it's mostly the independent process that I'm going to talk about. But let me show you what the difference is. The traditional process is where you, the author, writes some chapters or maybe the whole book, produce a marketing proposal and then send this to a number of literary agents. And the literary agents review your proposals, pitches to publishers, and then the publishers edits, designs the cover, lays it out for you, uh, markets the book, provides ad, ad comp campaigns, and then does all the publicity for you. And then the market means that it goes all to, the, to all of the bookstores who sell the books for you. That's the theory anyway. It doesn't quite work like that anymore. And also you'll find if you send it to a literary agent, then you'll get more letters saying, no, thank you, than you'll get that say yes. But if you do get one that says yes, then you could be in for uh, large sales and a, a large market. However, the alternative, because most writers will not get as far as the literary agent, let alone the, the publisher, is to bypass both of them. So you go from your author, you write it, and then you publish it directly to the online market through one of the channels that you can use, like Amazon or like one of the other channels that I'm going to talk about later. Remember that you can also sell books directly at fairs, book fairs or signing events, um, library and other talks like the ones that we um, promote with Promoting Yorkshire Authors. And if you've got a specialist book, like, you know, uh, historical fiction or maybe a a non-fiction, then you can go to specialist markets too and sell there. Just a little bit of a glimpse of the crystal ball in the future. Um, this is from Chloe Smith in 2017, so it's a little old now, yeah, but she was the direct director, publisher and partner of Zinio Digital Publishing Platform. So in the future, most fiction sales will come from ebooks, and indie authors and smaller presses will dominate that. Remember the smaller presses too. And Amazon titles will be, in fact they are, already are, best sellers. And the Kindle Unlimited, which I'll talk about in a little while, uh, readership will keep on growing. Unlimited is where readers borrow books and you get a, a, a fee for every page that they read. Increased competition. There is enormous competition now because the market is being flooded. And audiobooks are becoming much more popular as people are as time poor, until the pandemic hit at least, uh, people were time poor and they listen to the books in the car or whilst they're jogging or whatever else. Uh, Facebook adver adverts are becoming less uh, uh, pers persuasive and that is happening now. People are getting fed up of both Facebook and also uh, their adverts. Um, but international sales will spur profits um, and certainly I'm finding that I get more sales internationally than I do in the UK. And increasingly 
As you'll see from promoting Yorkshire authors, authors will work together to promote each other's work. So, okay, you want to be, you're listening to this because you want to be an independent publisher. And it all starts before you start writing, because if you can't sell your book, then you don't have a market. So the first thing is you've got to ask yourself, why am I writing this story? Is this in the right genre? Is it a saleable genre? And if I'm going to write a story, what am I going to write it about? Are you going to plan the whole story out, the whole theme out, the whole plot out before you start? Or are you going to go via a seat of pants? There are both valid ways of, of writing. Some people like to plot out the whole of their story before they start. Some, it kind of comes out of the end of their finger. And then what is your target market? Because if you don't have a market, you won't make any sales. So let's look, have a look at that, the target market. And what does it mean? So first of all, it means the people, because that'll impact your writing style. So if you're writing for the USA, then you better write in USA English and in a style that satisfies that audience. If you're writing a historical novel for the UK, well, then you'd better write in their style. The age group, you know, if you're writing for children, then the language needs to be different than if you're writing for uh, an older uh, age group. And the gender, it does matter. Uh, if you're writing for men, then generally they like a different kind of book than, than do women. Not always, but sometimes, some of them do. You need to look at the size of your market as well, because if you don't have a market, then you won't sell any. So is there room for the book that you're writing? Let's just have a look at some interesting statistics just to help you along your way. Of the big five publishers, they only have 16% of the ebooks on the Amazon bestsellers list. So that's of the big five publishers. So if you're thinking about ebooks, then that means only 16% of Amazon's sales, bestseller sales, are from those publishers. In terms of ebook sales, 31% of them are indie publishers, indie writers. And indies dominate in the genres that I've shown here, which are sci-fi, mystery, thriller and romance. Good idea to create a series because that helps with your sales. So if you start with seri you know, a book with series one, a book one of the series, and you have six in the series, people might then go on to book two, book three, book four, book five, assuming they like it, of course. Quite a few people give away books. I, personally, I think it's a really bad idea. Um, they're not very expensive anyway, even if they were, you know, three or four pounds. It's the price for coffee. But the pricing sweet spot is now between $2.99, remember $2.99, which equates to about £2.99, and $3.99, which equates to about £3.99. 99 pence or 99 cents is no longer a sweet, point, a sweet spot for, for, get, for more or less giving books away, unless it's the teaser for the series. You might want to give away either a prequel or book one of the series uh, for 99 pence. And bear in mind that for ebooks, readers prefer longer books, greater than 100,000 words. And the non fiction market is much less price sensitive than is the fiction market. Again, a little bit more about the market. Um, there are two sets of st statistics here. Uh, unfortunately, they use slightly different terms. And this was from the Corp, Writing Cooperative of 2017 uh, from the sale of 2.6 billion books so it's quite a, a, a good source. If you go around anti-clockwise starting at the blue historical then you'll see that children's is a large market and that the modern literary which includes romance and fantasy and classics and mystery are all good markets. Um, young adult is often included in some of the science fiction as well, so uh, fantasy and science fiction. Uh, and um, also magical and realism is often included in some of the fantasy, so it's a rather arbitrary definition that. And the money makers are, as you might guess, romance and erotica, crime and mystery, very popular, religious, but that mostly is the Bible and the Quran, and then fantasy and science fiction. And the ones most requested by agents are young adults first, fantasy second, literary, 
which includes some romance. And then down at the bottom is women's fiction, which is surprising. So remember, if you're writing, well then keep writing. Just keep going. Get the story down, but think about your writing style. Match it to your target marketplace. Keep on going. Don't stop. Just keep writing until the point that you finish your first draft. You think you're ready. Well, you're not. Your, Terry Pratchett said your first draft is about telling the story to yourself. So it's not yet ready. So you take a break now. Do something else. Start on your second book. Start on the third one in the series or whatever it is. Take a break. Three months is a good idea. I know you want to publish it immediately, but take a break. Read through it and correct it. And rid yourself of that self-doubt. Your book is good. Believe it. And then keep repeating that until you're correcting corrections. And no, you're not yet ready for publishing. You've still got something to do. The, probably the best thing you can do is to give it to a critical editor or beta reader. Beta readers. Someone who will be honest with you and who will red pen your work with, red, with track changes on, you know, so that you'll see the changes that they're suggesting. You don't have to accept all of those changes, but it's nice to see what other people think. And you don't want somebody who will say, ah, that's great, or that's rubbish. So once they've come back with their red pen, read through it again, and then take another break, a month maybe. And then only make changes if the changes are essential. But if you do make changes, then you need to return to as if it's the first draft. And then start again giving it to another beta readers or some another critical editor. Because if you've made big changes, then you're likely to have made the same mistakes again. So you might have to go through that on several iterations until you are definitely ready for publishing. And then you need to decide whether you want ebooks, paperback, hardback, and where you're going to publish. Before you do that, you need to prepare your cover, the blurb for the back of the, the cover, particularly for a paperback, and, or not for the back in terms of uh, some electronic publishing for the blurb that goes with the publishing. A synopsis and any launch material you might, you might want, like publicity and that kind of thing. And then we move on to publishing, which really is the easy bit of the process. You need a manuscript in Word or PDF format. Word for ebooks and PDF for paperbacks or hardback books. You need a cover in JPEG format. And if you're going to do a wraparound cover, you need it to be print ready PDF. You need the cover blurb and a synopsis that you can use for your publicity. And then after that, once you've done your publishing, which we're going to cover in a little bit more detail in a minute, then you've got the difficult bit, which is post-publishing, which is about selling, really. So you, are you going to do a launch event? Lots of authors do do a, a launch event. You might do a book signing. They're not very successful, really. A launch event on social media can be quite successful. You might want to think about a press release or something on social media to really gain some interest. And we'll talk a little bit about it, uh, about social media and how you can achieve that later. Um, remember that what you want to do is ongoing, ongoing publicity. It has to be relentless. And you really ought to do it to a marketing plan which tells you what you're going to do on a regular cycle. Remember, it's relentless. If you don't publicize, you will not make any sales. So let's look at the publishing process. What formats have we got? Well, we've got ebooks, things like uh, the, for the Kindle or reading directly online, um, Apple iBooks, for example. Or you might want to do paperback for fiction. Other formats for non-fiction and specialist books like children's books, colour books um, or like hardback books for non-fiction books. For fiction most of us will want an e-book and a print-on-demand paperback. What print-on-demand means is that you, you need no stocks of the book. If you're doing it on Amazon 
and, and many others as well, then they will deal with the fulfillment for you. They will print the book whenever it's ordered. It's something that's new in the last 10 years that's happened. And that's, it's that that really has revolutionized the paperback market. So your choice depends on how you want to sell it. Do you want to sell it online, through Amazon, through Smashwords, through Ingram Spark, or through many of the other avenues that you, you have? Now, I'm going to start with ubiquitous Amazon, um, mostly because it's got 80% of the e-book market, and also an increasing share, certainly over 60% of the paperback market. So I'm going to do a brief expose of the Amazon publishing process. You might want to start by using Kindle Direct Publishing and I've got the URL for that, the link uh, is there, kdp.amazon.com, something you might want to write down, kdp.amazon.com. If you use your Amazon sign-in, your normal Amazon sign-in, in order to gain access to it, and despite its name, Kindle Direct Publishing, you can also publish paperbacks on KDP. Let's start with the Kindle ebook because it's easier and you will need a Word document in docx format of your manuscript file and your cover image in JPEG format. Something like a 1920 by 1080 pixels uh, is fine for the cover image. And you'll need a title, the synopsis, the pricing and which territories that you'd like to sell your book in. So let's start by clicking on bookshelf within Kindle Direct Publishing. So that's the tabs at the top. If you look you'll see bookshelf. There's reports, community and KDP select next to it which we'll cover in a bit. So you'll see you want to create a new title and you want to click on add Kindle books. It tells you a little bit about there. You might want to read some of that the creation tools and uh, the guides about uh, how you create the Kindle book uh, initially. You'll find below that are all the books that you've published up to now. I've published quite a few. Um, yours might be empty if this is your first book. So I'm going to click. So imagine that I've clicked on Kindle ebooks. Okay, add an ebook. Then I'll get the screen which allows me to go through a number of tabs to actually provide information about the ebook. The first is the language, the second is the book title and a subtitle if you wish it. The third is the series, what series that, that you want. And I'm imagine that I'm scrolling down now. And then whether you want digital rights management. Now digital rights management is where they protect your book, uh, for example. Now, you might want to think about putting DRM on, Digital Rights Management DRM. However, I usually switch it off because it's worse than useless. Most uh, ebook readers can remove the Digital Rights Management anyway. But you might want to switch it on if you think it, <laughs> it might protect you. It won't protect you, but it, you might think it protects you. You might consider using Calibre to convert your book to EPUB or MOBI format if you know how to transfer a book to your Kindle and you want to have a look at it uh, before you put it onto here. MOBI format is the standard Kindle format. It's generally used DocX and I find that it uploads it okay. So upload the manuscript and then after a little while it will process the, the manuscript and you'll find that it says it's uploaded successfully. The next sc screen is about the ebook cover. So you've got your JPEG of your cover, so you upload your cover file. And then you might want to have a look at it. So you launch the previewer. That allows me to, to view as if I'm viewing the book on the uh, Kindle. And you can scroll through it so that there'll be uh, to the right and to the left will be little arrows to allow you to scroll through it. So you can scroll through the book and I would suggest that you go through the whole of the book and scan it, if not read it, to make sure that it looks okay. This is your last chance before you finally publish. So once you've clicked on that, you can click publish and it's on Amazon. Well, at least it will be within 48 hours. 
So let me just say a little bit about KDP Select. Um, KDP Select gives Amazon exclusive rights to sell and you can't sell it anywhere else. So you might ask, why am I going to do that? Why would I want to give KD, Amazon the exclusive rights to sell my book if I can't sell it anywhere else? Well, there's a potential to earn higher royalties and you can also do free promotions for a limited time. You certainly reach a larger, larger audience because you can lend your book too and you get a cent for each page that is read. And Amazon does give limited promotion to your book too. So it's worth thinking about it. If you're not going to publish it anywhere else, then I would suggest you do use indie, uh, the KDP Select Indie Publishing uh, option on, on Amazon. You can also use Kindle Matchbook, which allows readers to get an ebook for free if they buy a paperback. I haven't particularly found that that's, that's useful, but there you are. Uh, digital rights management supposedly protects your book. I mentioned that earlier, uh, but in, in reality it doesn't, and it's a turn-off for most readers. The international standards book number isn't essential for ebooks. So let's look at publishing paperbacks. For this you'll need something different. You'll need your manuscript in a PDF format, paginated correctly for the page uh, size that you're expecting, the book cover size that you're expecting. And with the expected margins, you need to see Amazon's guidelines for this. It's really important that you look at Amazon's guidelines for the margins. The last thing you want is to have uh, published your paperback book and it's cramped in the middle, particularly in the middle. The cover image and blurb for the back of the cover and the cover image needs to be in exactly the same size as your book size. And then you need to know the territories and pricing. You'll need an ISBN and unless you're using Amazon supplied ISBN, which they can supply, I'd suggest you always use your own ISBN. You can buy them, um, you can buy them in a block of 10. So I would suggest you do that. So you end up in the same place in your Kindle Direct Publishing, in the bookshelf. You notice the bookshelf is bolded at the top there. This time you'll see that I've published the book uh, the Kindle ebook, and now I can create a paperback. It allows me to create a paperback. And I would suggest you click that rather than create new title at the top because then the two books are linked. So you see, I will click on create paperback just below where I've created my ebook. You get a similar screen filled in this time because you've already published the ebook. And then whether you want to assign a free uh, Kindle Direct pu Publishing ISBN and it will say independently published or use my own ISBN. I would use your own ISBN. Um, then your ISBN will be available in book uh, in uh, bookshops and the like. Uh, Amazon ISBNs are not. Uh, they're only available on Amazon. And then I'd suggest that you uh, choose a different book size than the ones that are here. I generally use five and a quarter by eight inch because it's a popular book size and it's particularly um, a good book size in the, U in the US. And I'd always use cream paper, not white paper. It looks much more like a, a regular paperback. <coughs> and then upload the paperback manuscript. And remember this is in PDF and you need to look at the KDP recommendations for how you format that. It's really important. Uh, don't skimp on this. This is your final product. If you have a cover already available in print PDF format, which many designers can do for you, that's a wraparound cover, then you can upload it directly. If you haven't, then you can launch the cover creator, which is Amazon's own tool to allow you to use the image that you use for your ebook, plus some blurb that you put on the back of the book in order to create a print ready PDF for your book. And then once you've produced your book cover, you can preview it like this. So this is the book cover that I've previewed. I changed it a little bit after this because I didn't like the, the place that uh, the author name, that's my uh, pen name, uh, I much preferred it to be in the center, but you can see that it looks like a, a book cover. And then 
you launch the preview and now this takes forever in order to load best to go off for a cup of tea at this point uh, it, it will takes about six different processes to go through it and once it's through the end of it uh, leave it just leave it running and don't stop it in the middle of it or you have to go through the whole process again you can then preview the paperback and again I'd suggest that you do go through this go through each page and check it even if you're only scanning it but check it check that you like it I didn't like this very much I preferred the the tight the um, header in the center and also I didn't like the uh, margin in the center so I changed this and resubmitted it so it was worth going through the process of um, examining the the paperback and then it's all about pricing pricing is slightly different for for paperbacks because you you know you've got to print the paperback and Amazon um, charges for that paperback as you might guess so I've chosen to publish this in all territories so it's worldwide rights and then I want to make my primary marketplace amazon.co.uk so I can price it in pounds uh, if you want another marketplace then you price in that currency so if you wanted the US to be the primary marketplace then you would price it in dollars and there is a minimum price for a paperback obviously the minimum price is slightly above uh, what the the cost of production of the the book is the printing costs so you get a 60 percent printing cost of 1.70 a royalty of 69 pence i get much more royalty out of ebooks and i much prefer to sell ebooks if i can too once you've been through that you simply click publish your paperback book and then 48 hours later it appears on amazon and you can start selling Amazon has some tools as well to allow you to look at your sales a sales dashboard it's in the reports section this one is sales there's another thing uh, if you're enrolled in Kindle Direct Publishing then you've got this thing called a Kindle edition normalized pages so they normalize the number of pages to a base so say a hundred pages and then if your books 200 pages then every two pages they read you'll get one pages worth of credit and a credit gives you about a cent and you can see that quite a few people are borrowing my book you know I can understand why people might not like Amazon they are rather dominant um, they do take rather a lot not as much, much as many publishers but they do take rather a lot of your revenue however they do provide a great platform but there are alternatives there is an irresistible impulse to turn to the ubiquitous Amazon and and I would say just do it you know <laughs> accept the impulse because they are everywhere but there are others and the new guy on the marketplace Ingram Spark which also publish on Amazon for you but also to all of the other major outlets it's like a publisher but you're paying for the, the publishing process whereas you don't pay anything on on Amazon at least not currently there are others for paperbacks as well uh, Ingram Spark produces a, a good quality paperback um, and small publishers small publishing houses who can print you know odd 10 or 20 for you with small publishers you probably need to have it will not be print on demand you'll probably have to have a supply that you then sell uh, directly to the public remember that selling is about telling and you need to have a marketing plan in order to decide how you're going to sell and what will good marketing lead to but it will increase your recognition that means people will know about your you and your books and it will increase your exposure if both of those are successful and only if both of those are successful then it will improve your brand awareness that means you as an author or you as a series and then increase your sales so the good marketing leads to recognition which leads to exposure which leads to brand awareness which then leads to sales don't expect all of this to happen immediately I used to have a saying when I ran a business which was I do something today and I might not know if I got any benefit out of it for 12 months but if I hadn't done it I would have got no benefit let's look at 
what a marketing plan is, a good marketing plan. So first thing is about targeting. Just what is your market? Does it exist? It better because unless you have a, a very deep pockets, you're not going to be able to create a market. Apple created a market with their iPad and to some degree with their iPhone. Um, I don't think you have, well, you might have, <laughs> but I don't think you'll have as deeper pockets as, as Apple did. Because if there's no market, then there'll be no sales. And as I said earlier, marketing should preferably start before you start writing. So you should be writing for a market that exists. So write yourself a marketing plan. Write yourself some objectives. What is it you want to achieve? Do I want to achieve a thousand sales this year? 10,000 sales this year? Best seller? If so, how are you going to achieve it? Write down how you're going to achieve that. If you want to be a best seller, you have to do lots of of marketing you have to be in front of everybody all the time there's a lot of effort to get to be a, a bestseller in fact you know being an overnight success takes a long time so you need to also spend some money and get a return for that money and then you've got to decide when you want to achieve that if it's going to be a bestseller is it going to be for tw in 12 months is it, you want it six months you want it in three years so there's lots of questions you've got to ask yourself and that's what the marketing plan's about. What are my objectives? How am I going to achieve them? How much am I going to spend? When do I want to achieve it? And then you've got to decide what routes you've got to market. Cover that in a, a few seconds. That will lead to the tasks that you need doing. Like what am I going to do? When am I going to do it? And how will I know if I've been successful or not? So conventional marketing, what is it? Well, it's about telling people in the normal everyday marketplace, like, you know, appearing at launches of your book, signing books in a cafe somewhere, appearance at events, being in the printed media, getting press releases done, appearing in magazines, winning competitions, appearing on the radio, appearing on the TV, or spreading the word via word of mouth. Now, how do you do that? Where do your audience reside? And how do you reach them? And can you afford to pay to reach them? I said about conventional marketing, you know, you want to be on TV and radio, of course you do, so does everybody else. And you can bet your bottom dollar that the door will be firmly closed. You'll need to open it. And how you open that is the big question. You need to have in innovative ideas in order to open that door. So remember, the, f the door is firmly closed. Now, if you can't open the door by coming up with some innovative ideas, then find someone who can and exploit those opportunities. Latch on, you know, guerrilla marketing it used to be called. Latch on to what, whatever is happening around you. You also need to look at the electronic media and the big players in this marketplace are Facebook and Instagram owned by Facebook of course Twitter LinkedIn a much more a business network and WhatsApp much more a one-to-one peer-to-peer -to -peer type network Facebook uh, is becoming less useful for for getting um, sales on books and also fa Facebook's algorithms flag up anything that you're trying to sell on your own social network you need to have pages in order to do that instagram slightly better and twitter is slightly better linkedin is not particularly useful and whatsapp is not particularly useful either in, in terms of using electronic media groups are really useful in order to find like-minded people so for example if you've got a readers group who are looking at particular genre of book then you might want to just mention something about your book in there. Not selling, not too obvious, but something that might gain interest with a few links. Hashtags are another way of, of getting interest because hashtags are recognized by people who don't necessarily follow you or the group. So there's something that might be of interest. You know, like hash fantasy might tag books that are in the fantasy genre, for example. You might want to hook up to a trending hashtag, for example. So if you've got something that's happening in the news and it's got a trending, you know, you've got, it's hash spring, spring watch this week, 
for example, and you've got a non-fiction book on birds, then you might want to link it to the hash spring, ta spring watch where millions of people might see that tag. Retweets or reposts, retweets in Twitter, reposts elsewhere, are where other people post again, you know, your, your message. And that extends the life of your posts for a little bit longer. Most posts last, if you're lucky, 10 seconds. But by retweeting and reposting, get other people to, to repost, to recommend your posts, then you extend the, the life of this. Don't just say, oh, this is my book I've written, and isn't it great? You, your ideas need to be innovative, interesting, different, relevant, and targeted. You need to come up with ideas in order to, to attract your marketplace. So that's independent publishing. The important thing about it is that uh, you're in charge of your market. You're in charge of your marketing. And if you don't market, you don't tell, you won't sell. I hope that's been of use to you. I hope that's been very helpful. Thank you for listening.